I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper, and I think the House will understand why it is topical. Uh, my Lords, uh, Government recognises space debris as a risk to the critical national infrastructure. Due to our reliance on space services, including for communications, climate monitoring, navigation and timing, a summary of the National Risk Assessment is set out in the UK's National Risk Register 2025. We invest in space situational awareness, in-orbit servicing and active debris removal missions and work with international partners through the European Space Agency and the United Nations to address the risk. I thank my noble friend for that answer. Two weeks ago today, the Your Lordship's Committee on Engagement with Space, of which I was a member, published its report, Act Now or Lose Out, and highlighted the issue of space debris. There are tens, if not hundreds of thousands, of bits of junk going round the Earth. This was dramatically illustrated last week when three astronauts were unable to leave the Chinese space station to return to Earth because their spacecraft was hit probably by space debris. Now, um, satellites are a critical part of our national infrastructure, so may I ask my noble friend what strategy the government is adopting to protect our satellites and other elements of critical national infrastructure and to encourage the UK to play its part in the space economy of the future, and will these issues be raised at the forthcoming European Space Agency Ministerial Council next week? Yeah. Uh, my Lord, firstly, may I uh, take this opportunity to uh, thank the UK Engagement with Space Committee for all their work that they've done and for the recent publication of the report as mentioned by my noble friend. My, my Lords, the Government is strengthening UK space surveillance, tightening regulatory standards and investing in debris mitigation technologies. We are committed to global leadership in sustainable space operations and funded debris, debris programmes at the U European Space Agency's Council of Ministers in 2022. My Lords, I will ask my colleague, Minister Lloyd, to raise the issue of space debris at the forthcoming ESA ministerial meeting. The UK's approach on space will balance our national security and growth in the expanding global space economy. I'm glad the Minister has mentioned, uh, alongside the noble uh, Viscount, the uh, most recent report of the Select Committee. But, my Lords, given what the Minister said about active debris removal and the European Space Agency, um, what is the Government doing to ensure that the cost of end-of-life uh, end compliance is uh, actually met by commercial satellite operators uh, and not from the public purse, my Lord? Uh, the Noble Lord makes a very interesting point, my Lord. I, look, the Government is currently uh, funding innovation in debris mitigation and removal, and it, it supports the research and development to UK RI and Innovate UK. Of course, we do have so, private companies like Astroscale and ClearSpace and funded trials in orbit servicing. But as far as cleaning the outer or inner in orbit uh, debris itself, look, space is global, and we have to work with our global partners in addressing this issue. As far as funding is concerned, conversations are ongoing as to who will pay for it. My, my Lord. Um, I suppose I should declare a small interest as having been the progenitor of the Space Committee. Uh, but, my Lords, we think of space as infinite. In fact, the usable orbits are a crowd of high-speed rubbish. Just a fleck of paint will do damage. Not long ago, a single bolt took out a French satellite. The only satisfaction being was that the bolt had come from another French satellite, but that's, <laughs> that, that's another story. Um, does the noble lord, the minister, agree with me that there is a serious economic opportunity here for the United Kingdom to take the lead on the legal and the licensing issues in this global space, which is still the Wild West? And if I could leave noble lords with an image in their minds, it is full of dangerous shrapnel. And sooner or later, an astro astronaut will be killed. Uh, the noble lord makes a very interesting and, and, and a good point there. Uh, my lords, uh, space may be the final frontier, <laughs> but it is beginning to resemble the oh. final landfill. Oh. But if we are to boldly go <laughs> where no man has gone before, we must first ensure we are not tripping 
over the debris of those who have already been there. My lords, uh, the noble lord is absolutely right. It's congested up there. And I'll just share some statistics with noble lords. I mean, there are currently something like 12,500 functional satellites with something like 2,700 satellites that are not working and defunct, and something like 54,000 debris up to a size of 10 centimetres, and 1.2 million uh, debris between 1 and 10 centimetres, and something like 140 million uh, debris up to 1 millimetre to 1 centimetre. Yes, we need to clean up, and there is actually a, 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 a economic growth in there, and our companies are, will get a share of that. My Lords, um, I would argue that having our own sovereign launch capability is one of the most practical tools we could have for monitoring space debris. It gives us the ability to put the right satellites into the right orbits at the right time without relying on another country's launch schedule or priorities. So can I ask uh, the Noble Lord, the Minister, uh, what is the government doing to invest in building spaceports? especially in the north of Scotland, Sutherland, not just one, but a cluster to enhance our sovereign launch capability. I thank the noble lady for that. In fact, uh, I mean, we should be very proud of uh, the spaceport up in Shannon Islands, and, and government is actually sort of investing in that particular project itself, and hopefully we'll be making an announcement soon as to when we can launch a satellite there. But also, uh, uh, added to that, I, mean, I just want to share with Noble Lords that His Majesty the King is also uh, uh, very interested in this whole area of space, and he's announced the Astra Carter Initiative in June 2023, and he's bringing so, stakeholders together to look at space and how to create a more sustainable uh, space for everybody. My Lords, my Lords. My Lords, uh, I refer to my interests as Chair of the National Preparedness Commission. Um, most of our infrastructure relies on signals from space, timing signals for the finance sector, uh, positioning signals, and so on. Um, they can be interfered in with a variety of ways, some of which are space debris, but they are vulnerable to being uh, hacked, to being spoofed, all sorts of things. Um, so could the Noble Lord, the Minister, tell us what arrangements are being taken to ensure that our critical national infrastructure prepares for the circumstances in which those signals are seriously disrupted for a significant period of time. What is our plan B in the event of that disruption? Yeah. I thank my noble friend for, for that point. I mean, look, currently as it stands, I mean, this is playing a, uh, a major role in developing a UK space surveillance. Act. It all covers uh, debris and other satellites as well. And through the space clusters and infrastructure fund, we are backing new ground-based observatories and analytics uh, uh, platforms. We are also coordinating with the UK Space Agency, academia and defence sector to integrate civil and military space surveillance assets into a national capability, thereby reducing dependence on foreign data and supporting strategic uh, autonomy. So I'm going to attempt to boldly follow Lord Clement Jones's uh, line of questioning, and that is around the US building into their, um, uh, their licensing requirements uh, that the commercial operators actually take this into account. And they have a regulation that there's five years in terms of deorbiting of the low Earth orbiting satellites. We don't do that, and we work on a 25-year basis. Surely it's about time we try to catch up in this area. Uh, the Noble Lord makes a, a good point there. I mean, look, we have to work with international partners, whether it's US, whether it's Japan, or whether it's European Space Agency. And currently, I mean, the government is developing a space sustainable standards with commercial space sector investors and insurers as part of our wider regulatory reforms. And we have to bear in mind that reforms have to be outcome based, targeting clarity and certainty. And this is why we are actually attracting a lot of foreign based companies establishing the operations in UK, uh, the likes that we have I mentioned earlier about Astra uh, scale. <laughs> Following on for the Noble Lord Harris's question, um, <coughs> we have threats to space infrastructure from hostile actors. Viscount Stancake identified um, space debris. There's also a threat from space weather. And on the 11th and 12th of November, we saw a significant solar storm hitting the Earth. And the National Audit Office is now looking at doing an inquiry reporting in spring on that issue. 
With all of that in mind, is the government considering whether that we don't necessarily have to digitise every service that we provide, every piece of infrastructure, um, maybe keeping them non-digital uh, would be a way to ensure resilience? Um, that's a very interesting position to take, but look, whether we like it or not, we are in the digital age. I mean, we can't go back to the analog age. And because we are in the digital age, we rely on satellites, and it's very important we ensure that it's safe up there.